before we start, I'd just like to explain. Max DeCosta, violation of penal code 2219. Today, bus stop 34B. Yes, that's exactly what I wanted to talk to you about. You see, I believe there's been a misunderstanding. Immediate extension of parole by a further eight months. Wait, what? No, 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 no. I can explain what happened. I just made a joke. And, uh, you know. Stop talking. Elevation and heart rate detected. Would you like a pill? No. Thank you. What I'd like to do is explain Stop talking. What Personality matrix suggests a 78.3% <laughs> chance of regression to old behavior patterns. Grand Theft Auto. Assault with a deadly weapon. Resisting arrest. Would you like to talk to a human? No, I am okay. Thank you. Are you being sarcastic and or abusive? Negative. Hi, I'm Dave Bjerkman, managing editor of the News of Delaware County. And I'm Art Ryan, correspondent with the News. And welcome to our special summer edition of Take Two. And this is our review of Elysium, which opened up in movie theaters this past weekend, starring Matt Damon and Jodie Foster. Uh, the concept is very simple here. It's the year 2154. And uh, the wealthy live on Elysium, which is a space station orbiting the Earth. Uh, the residents there are mostly white, wealthy, powerful, living a life of luxury, void of disease and hunger. And on the planet below, poverty and crime uh, dominate all those who live there. Uh, especially the film's protagonist, uh, Max, played by uh, Matt Damon. Um, Dave, I felt for about the first hour or so, uh, I really enjoyed uh, the science fiction element of the story. Uh, it reminded me a lot of, when we were growing up, films like uh, Soylent Green and THX 1138. There's certainly sort of a political undertone here, uh, discussing issues like um, poverty, class warfare, availability of health care, things like that. But unfortunately for me, and I think for you as well, after about that hour passes, it sort of just uh, delves into just one fight scene, action scene, over and over. And it simply just becomes boring after a while. and takes forever, for me anyway, to recover by the film's end. Yeah, yeah, this is not the first time this is, has happened. Uh, it seems like the, the trend these days is to take some pretty interesting concepts, particularly in the science fiction vein, and just throw in a whole bunch of uh, violence, fight scenes, battle scenes, things that do nothing to advance the storyline, but just, you know, I, I and in this, this case, I really felt like it dragged the story down terribly. It did. Um, and I don't know if they ever fully recovered. For me, um, it did. It just, it, there was this long period where you were like, like, just get on with it already. It was just one mindless fight scene, obstacle after another on, uh, you know, Max has to get up to Alicia because he's been um, dosed with this huge uh, dose of radiation. So he's going to die in five days. So the whole point is he has to get up on Elysium where they have this incredible, you know, healthcare system and this machine basically that looks like a flatbed tannery that you lie down in and a computer scans you, figures out your disease and, you know, cures you. And uh, they don't have that on Earth. Uh, so he has to get up there. Okay, that's great. I understand the concept, but it just becomes one endless battle after another uh, until he, you know, until the film's end. And I, for me, it did recover by the film's end, but it just took forever to get there. You know? Yeah, I mean, one of, the, one of the things that I like about the film is that it's taking uh, issues that we're dealing with today. You know, certainly there's a lot of talk about the, the, uh, the, the gap that's widening between those that have power and money and those that don't. Uh, and this carries, this extrapolates it into the future, and where the wealthy have basically abandoned humanity for its own self-interest. And, you know, these are great concepts, and, you know, I thought he did a pretty good job. He created some interesting characters, and then just really didn't yeah, do he, as much with it as he could yeah, have. This was and, uh, written by Neil Blomkamp, who uh, wrote and directed uh, District 9 in 2009, which was his only other feature film, which was nominated for Best Picture. There's no danger of this movie being nominated for Best Picture. Uh, yeah, it certainly I mean, doesn't have um, the thought behind it that District 9 had. Uh, it certainly yeah, doesn't follow through. Well yeah, I mean, Dist did. District 9 was uh, quirky and... Uh, I mean, the much, metaphor much he set up in that worked a lot better for apartheid in South Africa as it does, than it does here. And he's carrying that theme forward into Elysium, but... I don't know if it was because he had more studio backing this time. It just doesn't come across as effectively. Like I say, it, it degenerates into these you know, fight scenes. And, you know. There's a horrible performance by Jodie Foster as the Secretary of Defense. Um, 
performing some sort of hybrid French European accent that doesn't quite work. You don't know what she's doing. And she comes off over the top, I thought, in the film. Um, almost like she's in a different film than when you're on Earth watching, you know, that day. I don't know, I wasn't as bothered by that, but I kind of I kind of see where you're going with it. But, uh, I, you know, I, Matt Damon, he did fine, but I just thought I was watching Bruce Willis in an action picture, so... It I, certainly becomes that by the, by the end. Uh, although I thought <clears throat> when they, uh, when the film started, that first hour that I really liked, it starts off with Max as a little boy, and he's growing up in this orphanage, and he's looking up at Elysium in the sky, and his big dream is to someday uh, go to Elysium with his young child uh, friend, uh, Frey. Um, and then, of course, it, the, the story you know, uh, fast forwards many years later when Damon has grown up, and he's living in this awful society of poverty, and he's also a paroled car thief, and he's trying to go straight, but he's working for this big conglomerate um, uh, arms manufacturer, sort of pseudo Halliburton uh, type. You know, it's all of those those little uh, there's, yeah, there's, nods are there. You definitely that. know uh, what the film's political leanings are. Uh, they even refer to Elysium security as homeland security. So there's a lot of uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, little yeah. tie-ins to. And you know, and there's a lot of nice touches in the film, with some beautiful visuals with the uh, the space station, um, and that's I think that's why I was disappointed that it did kind of degenerate. Didn't follow through. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, maybe another couple of hours of editing might have helped. I don't know. So that's our review of Alicia, which we in the movie theaters this past weekend. And be sure to check uh, uh, DelcoNewsNetwork.com in the coming weeks for our next review.